Hello, welcome to the Cool Guys, Guys Commentary, commentary. July 10th, 2010. 2010. You're Who watching cares? the movie that probably broke. <laughs> Shut up, dude, I care. I wish I'd done it on the last DVD. You're watching the movie that almost broke up Astron 6. Take it away, chair! It took two years to make this movie because we basically filmed for, what, six months and then sat on it for a year and a half? This movie is directed by Astron Smithy because it had no real director. We all took turns. Steve was the main cameraman for the most part of it, then he didn't want to work on it ever again. <laughs> because we were filming at the same time as Heart of Carl, and I got overwhelmed, so I said, sorry guys, gotta take this over from me. And I feel bad that I did that. Cause... It was a horrible disastrophe. Every location we got <laughs> was pulled right out from under us. Adam, you can talk about that shit when we get to those locations in the movie. The movie. Now we're gonna rip on Steve for abandoning this movie. All right, Steve, Steve, worst Steve. mistake of your life. Worst mistake of your Heart life. Heart of Carl, box office bomb. <laughs> cool guys, box office yeah! hit. Yeah! Woo! All now, I ask you, Steve, is what is the fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes for Heart of Carl? Yep. Oh, thirty percent. Rotten. Cool guys! 27. 93%! Yeah! Fresh, fresh, fresh! <laughs> okay, well, filmed one sorry. dark night. This. Wait, ooh, dark ooh night. this is the dark best night. part of the movie. <laughs> if anyone is <laughs> hasn't turned it off by this part, it only gets better. Adam and I filmed that one night at 3 o'clock in the morning before driving to Falcon Lake. Clearly drunk. Clearly <laughs> drunk. That's my nephew, again. Got a little croc. We're in Steve Smith's wicked car. Thanks, Steve. These, these this was kind of a fun day. That was Red a green. fun hot day. Yeah, we did this. We did the rooftop stuff, too, I think. Jared, talk about these titles. Um, yeah. All right, that's exciting. Okay. So but... this was based on Hard Bodies, or at least inspired by. Inspired by the opening credits of Hard Bodies. This is our little homage to movies like Hard Bodies and Spring Break and Weekend at Bernie's. Bernie's. This whole opening was shot with our two Computer girlfriends. Computer beach party. Me and Matt's two girlfriends. Hot moves. Matt and I wrote this Ghost script, Dad. and then Jer came in and added Ghost Dog. comedy to it. <laughs> <laughs> Adam and I wrote a straight narrative. <laughs> a think piece. A really existential beach movie. Yeah, and then Jer came in and made it fucking lewd shit. So that's why he gets this. Jer just put in like more ass. He typed in like ass. <laughs> ass. They Dicks. slap an ass. Degrade women here. Here's our first female nudity. They spit on a boob here. Ouch. If you're Shereen Jarrett, you've already turned this movie off. Ooh. Um, so yeah, just to show how long it took to finish this piece of shit, uh, Cool Guys the trailer, which is completely different, was finished and screened uh, two years, I guess, before this movie Almost was two years. finished and screened. I think that's probably a big reason why this never got finished, is a lot of people were just content with having the trailer. And a lot of people hated the trailer. Yes, they did. <laughs> a lot of people hate this, too. Yep. Do they? Really? Yep. Everyone I've shown is crazy about it. Actually, uh, a lot of people like this movie. Yep. Yeah, I've only had positive reactions outside of art council. I'm drinking people. lake well, I'm water thinking and of, food coloring. You know, people higher up to the U of W oh, Film Festival, yeah. for instance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jer, I already What's named that her. woman's <laughs> name? I'd like to... <laughs> Let's say it. Yeah. I already said that would be Shireen Jarrett. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Well, this uh, this scene was shot on a uh, freezing cold beach with high winds. <laughs> yeah, uh, on Labor Day weekend. <coughs> yeah, a totally empty beach. Nobody was there. Yep. I believe I shot this stuff on a yeah, Sunday. This was the day that I ditched out to work on Harder Carl. I remember. Yeah, this movie was shot on a bunch of different beaches. Yep. And a bunch of different cameras. That, that was that... Grand Beach. Now we're at Falcon Lake. We're this at movie Falcon Lake. Shout out. Took about two weeks to color correct and fix because it was shot in so many different locations on so many different cameras that none of the scenes matched up. The sand is shot, all different colors. Shot half the movie on a still camera. It's <laughs> two frame by frame. <laughs> This guy who let us use this uh, soda shop, Wally, is awesome. Wally's Wild Thing, this is the only location, I think, in the whole movie that was given to us, and he was nice and helpful, and stayed out of our hair, and just, just awesome all around. Every single other location was a nightmare, nightmare, and every person responsible for those locations was a real dick to us. Yeah, they should really be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed and shot. I'm sure they are. <laughs> the name of that concession <laughs> stand. <laughs> is Wild Thing, and uh, it's in Falcon Lake, as we said. Steve has a cabin there. 
I so asked, if you're I down asked, there, visit Steve. You visit can stay at Steve. Steve's place. You can get a burger. Yeah, we'll thing. go. We'll go grab a burger together. There's the great uh, Falcon Vanderbeek, who uh, hasn't been in our films before, but is one of the best actors he's we've ever worked stealer. with. He's a scene stealer, and he has since retired from acting. He this is a one-time thing. He actually died of a drug overdose yeah, after. Falcon Vanderbeek, R.I.P. This is for you, buddy. That's Jer, and that's really me. That's not a dummy, like people always ask. Adam showed a lot of uh, trust faith in me, uh, letting me, you know. He is not wearing any protection away. on his. That's true. I'm not wearing any protection at all. It was and a trust exercise. You were just. And I passed. You were just missing my balls by a quarter of an inch. By a centimeter. Uh, Amy, Amy looks a lot like Janine from Ghostbusters in this movie. She's got really good uh, wardrobe in this. Yep. A lot of the wardrobe in this movie is. You're really welcome. Thanks to Meredith. Yeah. yeah. Meredith uh, pretty much clothes? did the costume choosing. Uh, and whenever there's bad choices, it's uh, Matt. it's me. They no, it's, put her in the credits it's people's Boston real clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it was Meredith and I. So oh, Meredith did Meredith. a good job. McPhillips Value Village. That shirt Connor's wearing was known as the Cats and Pizza shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Just a great shirt. With cats and it's pizza. one of the better I, shirts I still don't really made. see it though. That shirt's like a Rorschach test, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, but what does it mean, Jerry, that we see cats and pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you just have to look at the shirt in I'm real life and you'll see cats and pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, Jerry, there's cats and pizzas. You have to believe me. Now, when we had him say my golden hand. Oh, there goes my camera. Oh, yeah, we cut it out. Sorry. Oh, there's there's Steve Kostansky. No, you're, you're still coming up, Steve. Yeah, you get tortured as a as a guy on the beach as a ten year old. <laughs> sure Connor improvised the uh, total ruthlessness towards Amy. That's a funny uh, joke that kind of repeats throughout it. Well, it was always scripted that they didn't give a shit about her, but Connor made it turned it up. <laughs> this is the worst stuff, worst shot stuff in the whole movie. All the scenes in the hotel were pretty much shot by people off the street. It's garbage. <laughs> Steve shot some of this. I John Stebby shot some of this. And some Jared. hobo shot some of this. That's why it's shot like shit. And none of it fits together well. <laughs> if we could do anything to improve this movie, it would be reshoot all the scenes in the hotel. Speaking of the hotel, it was the Capri Motel rented for one night. And uh, it, was hell. it was a uh, night from fucking hell. How we, long a day was it? 18 hours or something? Oh, I think that the upside down one on the door is kind of an omen to what's coming. Mm. I never noticed that. Holy shit. Interesting. That room was fucked. That room was that hell. Curse on it. We fucking blew the uh, fuses over and over again. We blew was... the fuses in the guy's room beside us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was hotter <laughs> than fuck in there. So hot. That's yeah. because we blew the breaker by running the AC and all the lights at the same time. And the lights were like 600 watt lights in a tiny hotel room. So we were dripping sweat. We were there all night. I remember being there sort of first thing when you guys set up and then I had to take off and I went to a barbecue and just had a nice day, a real nice day. And then That's I came nice. back yeah. at like nice. 10 o'clock and you guys, I came in and knocked psychotic. on the door. I think you assumed that I was the police coming to show Yeah, we were all, we hid all, yeah. the, <laughs> we hid all the fake yeah. drugs. We had the bag of coke. And <laughs> everybody looked real scared when I got in. And then, uh, yeah, I had to keep it, reapplying that makeup because I sweat so much. It's, it's all over the walls if you look too. Yeah. yeah. There's like red handprints everywhere. And people kept showering and, and the, the sink leaked and the shower leaked so the bathroom floor was, was soaking wet. And, and people were putting wet towels right on the bathroom floor. Yeah, you got charged for the towels. We got in big shit at the end of it because <laughs> they said thought we shit on their towels. Yeah. That's what they yeah. accused well, us Matt of. Matt and I, Matt and I ended up sleeping there because we wanted to just make the most of the room. So we, <laughs> we shot until about five a.m. and, and then I left. Shoot, was not and Matt and Connor slept in the room. And then Matt there's and I, Steve Kostansky. Oh, Matt and I went to leave. There's Cynthia. And the guy was like, uh, "We have to charge you for the towels." I said, "Why?" That's Kayla. He said, "Because there's shit." Shit on the towels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? The, ma the maid says it's that awesome like shit. <laughs> that you have to assume that they value. just jumped to that conclusion because it's a common thing that happens in yeah. the Capri Motel. And that oh, was just red, on the towels. red makeup doesn't look like shit. There's Steve again getting drowned. Tell the story about the fire and the smoke detector in that room going off. Right, the smoke <laughs> detector goes off because of all the heat. And Steve Kostansky does what any good man would do. It just wouldn't stop. Try, we tried it down. Oh, yeah, wait, we tried to wrap it in a towel What first. happened is it's in the towel wrapped up during the morning scene, and you can hear it chirping because it went off, and we wrapped it up in a towel and put it in the shower. And then after that scene, 
Alex went into the shower and turned it on and got the fire alarm wet and it started making the worst noise Oh, didn't it? Ever. Like, it was like, it was like uh, oh. it But was at not the end of the, the night, it was noise. back on the roof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in pieces. Destroyed. Well, well Steve, no, it went off and then Steve tried to turn it off with, with a, a knife. Bowie knife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with the knife from the movie. I remember just standing there in disbelief watching him stab the fire alarm. <laughs> he destroyed it and it was completely yeah, unfunctional totally and then he put it back yeah, in. Yeah, we put it back in. I just want to say that uh, we fixed it though because <laughs> yeah. if there's a fire at the Capri Motel we are not responsible yeah at we all. fixed it we did fix it before we put it back up. yeah wasn't there some yeah. issue with I bought with a new movie. fire I bought a new fi- uh, fire detector as I recall oh, and put it up oh, yeah it's good this is a great gag this is such a dumb joke <laughs> I but love how dumb it is laugh. it's <laughs> like a naked gun joke <laughs> yeah. it's I, as low brow as you can get astronaut 6 sometimes sinks to naked gun <laughs> It's good to be able to jump to Naked Gun genre and David Lynch genre and then back. Well, Naked Naked Gun was David Lynch. It was a Lynch movie. I didn't know that. And Naked Lunch is a combination of those two styles you just mentioned. Well, Naked Lunch is a Zucker Brothers movie. Right. Naked Naked Smothers Brothers. Naked Lynch. Naked Lynch. (laughs) Falcon Vanderbeek. Is he related to that other Vanderbeek? Yeah, he's related yeah, to James I've never James heard of another Vanderbeek. I've only heard of Falcon. Okay. There's another one? Or? Yeah, the guy from Dawson. Falcon was really oh, good okay. to work with. I'd seen him in one other local uh, shitty independent movie that I won't name that was a piece of shit, and I just thought this guy's probably an awful actor. And then he showed up and was and awesome. killed. We won't, we won't say what the movie's called, but it is related to nobody's. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fucking garbage. Yep. And he's if garbage. you're listening to this, your Way movies go, fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Stop making them, you fucking idiot. <laughs> so you can. So that's Amy, uh, yeah. acting and stuff. I'm, I'm wearing a Karate Kid thing around my neck. I got one Purple more question cut. about the motel. Wasn't there some kind of issue with people across the way with like guns? Oh yeah. Somebody yeah. was shooting somebody yeah, with shooting like a paintball gun or. Yeah. yeah, I only have vague memories of that. There were and people it, standing outside their hotel room shooting at anybody that was outside. And it, in the end, walking. really worked in our favor because we were not the guys to pay attention to. No, if you want to yeah. get I think shit. in the long run, we were no trouble at all. This scene was cut down for the best because it had many worse jokes in it that are now taken out. What was done well is, even though the hotel room stuff was shot bad... Uh, the lighting to make it look like daylight's really good. This lighting is great. The lighting in the suicide scene is garbage. Yeah. And that's Ste- actually good. Stebby did a great job lighting this. Did he light this? He lit the morning scene, which is great. A great joke from Jer there. Only 16 more minutes of this bullshit. Nobody ever really catches it. Two different well, hotels now they're gonna Kenora. catch it. Yeah, I color corrected that hotel to look like the same hotel. Two different yeah. hotels in Kenora because... No, not only did we get kicked out of every I'm wearing location. a prosthetic dick to make my penis look smaller. That doesn't. That's not a thing that exists. I was telling something interesting, Adam, I mean, and you. Fuck you it. Fuck it. Not only did we get kicked out of any location we tried to film a scene in, we pulled up to shoot an establishing shot of that one hotel, and we had were we asked to leave. That. And we, so that's why there's two exteriors. That guy would not have even <laughs> known what we were doing no, at that no. point. He just didn't want us there. Period. So it's badly communicated in this movie, but I, uh, Murphy supposedly hurts his neck. <laughs> Trying to hang himself, and that's why he has to wear a neck brace. And he also supposedly hurts his knee tripping over the dead hooker, and that's why he wears a knee brace. Both of his shirt matches the drapes. It's also badly communicated that you're a big Robocop fan. That's why your name is Murphy. Because I'm in this scene called Larry, and uh, that's probably confusing to people, but there was an exercised, exorcised joke about liking Robocop. Well, I put in that effect of the uh, roof breaking. It, like, works fine. You always fucking worry about the neck brace, but it's like, I've never had someone... I don't someone... think people even care. Like, yeah. they don't question the neck brace or the... No uh, one's ever been like, brace. what the... This is real. This yeah. is improvised. Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. And funny. You can actually hear me laughing behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once we start to grapple. Jared is the worst at laughing and ruining yeah. takes for yeah, laughter. Yeah. He has the ugliest laugh. And I was genuinely concerned that I had <laughs> Thanks, thrown, thrown sand in Connor's face there. That was a breaking character. This is back at that hotel night from hell. This that is, just wouldn't end. This is, yeah, this is around the end of the This night. is the first night we ever met Heather Sims there. Ever. Really? Yeah. 
ever. This is also the exact time that Joe showed up and we thought he was the police or yeah, hotel yeah. owner. The best time to show up. When we were had coke on our faces. <laughs> Three in the morning, probably. Oh, what happened to Heather's face? What the H? <laughs> Snorting cheese there. Yeah. Fucking disgusting. <laughs> that was, I like that. Oh, yeah. the apocalypse Adam had the great yeah. idea that we should use powdered milk for cocaine in this scene, and it turned out to be the worst idea. Not the best idea. It was among the worst idea. <laughs> this is me doing Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future 2. And that's me doing, doing Michael J. Fox in Team Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration for half this movie is that one actor. Jer wrote this joke, which is my favorite Jeff. joke in the whole movie. This is a joke that I always get complimented on. <laughs> and I always, I always <laughs> take credit to And I uh, give you credit, oh, thank, you. thank you. I was well, just... Yeah, okay. I take credit for the whole movie. Yep. A lot of this, uh, <laughs> Adam gave me some stock footage that he took of his lava lamp for some reason, and so I overlaid it over this, and I think he gave it a Why'd nice you do that, Adam? psychedelic quality. I don't know, guys. I don't know, I do a lot of things. That was improvised by Matt and Connor. Yeah, I remember filming that, and just thinking, God, this is... Okay, homophobic, wow. Wow, and 2010, is... and you're still acting like this. It's out, it's out there, Con. It's true. And here is Stebby's very good morning lighting. Yep, very good job. And this is this fake. Is like three in the morning. There's no light outside, and he's just got a big light aimed at a gold reflector. That's it. That it good. really does feel like morning, even though, God, it was an awful late night. And I was so covered in sweat yeah, and we're so all <laughs> tired. I remember so that this is fine. all mostly filmed in one shot because yeah. everybody wanted to get out of there. And uh, <laughs> I remember convincing myself, yeah, we could do it you all. You told night. us. You convinced us. You convinced us. And, and we, we should all thought you were wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were very wrong. <laughs> we all thought it was going to look better you from you talking it up. <laughs> yeah, well... Murphy breaks his knee. Steve always sacrificing quality for time. Time to go home and have a great Have a big sleep. wink. To have a, a grapefruit drink. <laughs> Matt's <laughs> plugging his favorite uh, store with that bag. Steve, did village. you have a fruit drink after this? Is a good store. I did. Orange drink? Okay. Watch how sweaty we are. It's disgusting. Yeah, when I get slapped, you yeah. can see. And I'm fucking... Pouring sweat before that. It's very uh, good for the scene that we're all so shiny, though I'm the least shiny, definitely. But, Which is uh, weird, because you're the most shiny all the other times. Okay. Like in life. Yep. It's a compliment, man. What the fuck? This is where Steve crossed the line for dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> he crossed the line, like, like stuff that he like said. Like friendships. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a bad match. I have a very suiting haircut for this movie that was unintentionally stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna talk about Connor's hair because Connor didn't know how to what to do with his hair, but when he finally came out of the bathroom at his place with what his hair done, there? it was so funny. And when it's really in its best shape in this movie, I love it. Matt looks like Steve Gutenberg in this. That zoom in on the door is a different door, as you can pretty much tell. It's Matt's uh, sister's townhouse door, and when we see of winter, <laughs> when, you, when we see Amy outside, you will may notice snow behind her. Yeah, that how how long was that shot after the rest of this? A like year? year. It was shot before. It was shot in between finishing principal photography and then the pickup on the beach. Oh yeah, it was shot in between. Yeah, the beach was just last summer. Yeah. But this is outside of uh, country knoll townhouses where I live. Thank God you can't see their breath. Look at all that snow. Another thing that no one's ever mentioned to me, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just sand. This movie had uh, some of our most offensive humor in it, and uh, I think this scene is another one where we cut some jokes just because... Oh, uh, so much got cut. They went too far. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of shit that was just, like, foul. <laughs> yeah, not even really jokes, just hate. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you write a script with Matt. <laughs> I think it's what happens when you write a script he with wrote, you. He wrote Punch Out. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wish that you were more covered in, like, splattered in blood for that joke yeah, where she's just too. talking to you. <laughs> so, okay, this scene on the beach was the last thing shot, right? Yeah, this was, was like shot two years, years later, later or at least a year later. It's one year later, Jesus. So three years later. It wasn't later. even fully two years later that this came out. And this is like 5 a.m. And Matt and I drove to Kenora to Falcon Lake. And Connor met us 
driving from Kenora. And Matt's hair is way longer. Yeah, and we I are getting man board hair fucking again. eaten alive by mosquitoes. Our There's a really big logic problem in this where they've they discovered woke up, the body in the yeah, morning. First thing in the morning, and now they're burying it as the sun is going well, down. Well, tell us your no, theory the sun about is coming the time travel. Oh, okay, here. well, they spent an entire day with a dead body. But my theory is they? that they Ugh. spent all day uh, sending Connor back in time to the party. And so <laughs> to stop it from happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it took them a day to figure I would out love time to see travel. That deleted scene. Um, and then when he gets back, he has a very certain amount of time that he can warn them. So it's like fifteen seconds. So and, don't fuck it up, Chad. Yeah, exactly. And, and then Murphy coming into up. the bathroom. Uh, I blew it. Yeah, Chad's just such an idiot. <laughs> and then he would arrive back, and we'd be like, "So, <laughs> oh, uh, like, no, I don't know if he heard me." <laughs> the body in the blanket is Matt's roommate, John. Yeah, not John Stebby. You can see big male <laughs> big feet. Male big feet. man feet. <laughs> There's some stock footage. Um, we conceived this movie, like, before there was a story written, we conceived the Cool Guys uh, premise, and uh, we had always envisioned that there would be this movie, Cool Guys, that would have been made in the 80s, Weekend at Bernie's style, and would have been a moderate success, enough to spawn a sequel, and the sequel would have been called Cool Thing where the guys uh, turn their geeky friend into a super hot girl and try to have sex with her. And that movie would have bombed horribly, and then they would have come back ten years later with Cool Guys Part 2. <laughs> and all the actors would be in their mid to late 30s, pretending that they're still 20-something <laughs> young guys having a fun time at the beach. Murphy would be played by a different guy. <laughs> that movie would definitely tank. The original actor... Would be in Cool Thing, but in Cool Guys 2, that actor would be dead. <laughs> be played by Tom Arnold. And Kostansky had an entirely different uh, approach to the Cool Guy trailer that he was going to make before any story would have ever been written. That was... I don't what? know. I don't remember this. Don't you remember it? was it? just everybody saying, Cool Guys. Over yeah, and over. over and over again, and, <laughs> and gunshots just, going off and stuff. Well, and like, I, if I remember correctly, like, the situation just kept escalating, but then, yeah, it would cut to Cool Guys in the title, and that would somehow solve every problem that happened. Right. Mm. I still kind of feel like the movie has that mentality, though. I'm holding one of those talking keychains from the 80s in a joke. It's another deleted out. scene. It's another great deleted scene. Yeah. So this was a nightmare to shoot, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In Kenora. Uh, yeah, that guy location who... We were told we could use this, and then when we got there, we set up. We drove all out two hours just to get there, and then they told us, get the fuck out, uh, take yeah, the shit 20 down. 20 minutes to shoot. It's awful. And that guy's name was Buck. Didn't and happen twice. Big, yeah. Well, this apparently happened we twice. just could not ask the right person. Always, if you want to shoot on the harbor front in Kenora... Just ask Buck. Don't ask anybody else. Go to Buck. You gotta get Buck, like, in writing, on video, to <laughs> or say, you're fucked. All get of, Buck or you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> All of us is the, the crowd there. Yeah. I have a real hard time <laughs> pretending to play drums. Yeah, so. you act like you have never seen a drum in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I hadn't until that day. It's the first time you saw a that? drum. I'm doing my best Bob Hoskins from Hook impression <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Same Chad. That is so. You're not even playing anything with your left hand. Chad. Jer. Chad. Adam's fucking humiliated as it is. Look at him. Aaron Bland in the crowd. Aaron Bland also cameoing as the DJ. Objectified woman. So this uh, song uh, wrote the music. Matt wrote the lyrics. So it, it's another favorite. The axe thing is a little reference to uh, this shiny. story about. Pete Seeger going to cut the wires when Bob Dylan went electric. Fucking A. And cutting off his hand. And he cut off his hand in the process. <laughs> yeah. That was how he died, wasn't it? Yeah. That is footage that, that Connor took died. of a concert in Harborfest. Which a, would but be... he had a sign up that said, if you're here, you uh, are giving me a right to be permission yeah. to be used on film. Yeah. Also. It was also a nightmare. It was also shoot. not a carefree shoot of, like anything on Even this Even though movie. we got permission, I was still handed constantly. <laughs> Whole time. God, this movie was such a nightmare. <laughs> I'll say Falcon Vanderbeek knew all his lines. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty he's unusual. A, he's a real actor. Yeah, we'd never experienced one of those before. <laughs> yeah, I can't emphasize enough how much of a miracle this movie is. The fact that it's even watchable. Well, there was that rough cut that was done for so long, and it was 
Like, abysmal. Yeah, it. abysmal. I think so. somebody it said it was the worst thing we'd ever done. <laughs> it just really lost its yeah. drive after, like, when it gets to this point, you just don't want to watch it anymore. That uh, swimsuit Meredith's wearing uh, is, like, authentic from the early 90s or maybe late 80s, but uh, I just saw the uh, pretty much exact same thing for sale at American, American Apparel. Apparel. For, like, $80. Yeah, for, like, $80. <laughs> Go get it. I, I did. So you're saying that this movie really set it, a lot of trends. It set a lot of trends. We put an ad out for extras like we did for HIZ for that concert scene and not one person showed yeah, up. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Even my girlfriend was going to show up and didn't show up. So that's why we're all the crowd yeah. people. And the only people that are there are just like people we literally talk to on the phone. And, and nobody, none of my friends showed up. This is the end of a day, and we all just want to get the fuck out of here shooting this scene. Nice black void behind them. Wasn't that the inspiration for the trailer? Yeah, that um, Adam and I were talking about it when we had a certain amount of footage. Um, the Winnipeg Short Film Massacre was coming up, and I suggested that we could turn it into a horror movie uh, for the massacre uh, by just putting David Lynch-style music over top of it. <laughs> shooting a couple of new scenes. Yeah, and so uh, that's essentially what we did. But I think in the long run... The trailer uh, influenced and informed a lot of how this movie turned out. Just like uh, how dark it becomes at some parts. I wish the movie was more like the trailer and got right off the rails into insanity. There's a missing scene up here where we talk to a record producer. Rich Lanchester. Rich Lanchester, played by Wayne Udala. And that, you can see him there. The whole sequence is cut. That was the scene you wrote, Connor. This was a... Or at least came up with. This whole end... uh, was an idea that I came up with to save that horrible, horribly shot, poorly executed Rich Lanchester scene. I made all I, these magazines! After I watched Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and it's got a similar ending to this. Yeah. And uh, I think it makes the ending work. It's a funny progression through it. I love that the mayor's son gets executed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that the cool guys have such a happy ending and then such an unhappy ending immediately after. <laughs> What's really funny is if you look at the dates on these magazines, this all took place in like 2008. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not as good a graphic designer as you, is that no, what you're trying I, to I, say? No, I think it's good. I think it's like hilarious that these guys are so... Out of touch with yeah. everything. <laughs> we think this is cool. Dressing and acting like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we never condone the cool guy's behavior. That's, uh, uh, you know, people assume in those movies like Weekend at Bernie's that the protagonists are deep down good people. Sure. These are some great graphic uh, designs by Jer. <laughs> What's that? Some great <laughs> graphics designed by Jer. Jer, where'd you get that photo, for example? <laughs> Well done, Matt. You, you've done it again. It's a, it's like you're going out of your way to get us in trouble. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, oh, wicked. I deleted Shane. Charlie Shane. I deleted Charlie. So uh, Adam adamantly demanded that this get kept in the movie, even though it really doesn't need to be there. That would be a good band name for you, actually, Adam. Adamantly. What I would really like <laughs> is that my tears still be in the scene. It's there I, I for like one second. I don't think I need to call her Nobody effing... Nobody gives a shit about your tears. I don't think I need to call her an effing B-word, B though. That's not nice. I love how you're censoring yourself, Adam. This is very cool. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>